Hello, hi. Um, I'm back and we're talking about Mud House Sabbath. So I apologize that I just committed like the cardinal sin of um, Facebook living by having my camera this way instead of this way. But here we are. Um, so we just read a chapter on fasting and I'm wondering what you think. I'm going to lock my door because I tried to do this recording um, about an hour ago and every member of my family came in the room and so I stopped it. Anyhow, so here we are and I'm going to be honest that I was not super stoked about reading this chapter because I kind of feel like we're in um, a giant fasting period that we didn't ask for right now and I don't know that if if you relate to that as well. But I'm glad I read the chapter. I really liked it. I thought that there were some um, funny things in it. And there were also some really good things that made me pause. Um, so my very first question for you is, have you ever or do you regularly fast? Um, for many people, for many Christians in particular, Lent is a time of fasting, which is one of the reasons that we chose this book, because it talks about spiritual disciplines such as fasting, and there's a lot of attention given to that during Lent. Um, so that is my first question. Um, my second is, what did you like about the book, or what did you connect to in this particular chapter? I'll mention a couple things. One was Lauren tells the story of the time when she was fasting um, before she for converted to Christianity, I believe. And she was fasting on one of the, the days when you're supposed to fast and she was really hungry. And so she worked at a Jewish kosher, or excuse me, she worked at a kosher deli and it was locked because it was a fasting day, but she was hungry. So she let herself in and she made herself a salami sandwich. Um, I thought that was really funny, only because it's really human. I often, when I fast, really struggle with that. Um, I'm just like so fixated on the food, or I have accidentally eaten on a fasting day before. Um, I've purposely eaten on a fasting day before. But I find, kind of as Lauren mentions, the older I get, I, I'll be honest, I don't... Um, I don't actually look forward to fasting more like some people do. I'm not there yet, um, but I do think that I get more out of it. Um, so she talks about how the purpose of fasting, she says, fasting is not meant to drag us down, but to still us. It's not meant to distract us from the really real, but rather to silence us so we can hear things as they most truly are. And then she goes on to talk about how I'm hungriest for God. My truest hunger is for God. So in other words, when you're hungry, when you're fasting as a spiritual discipline, um, the purpose of that is to draw you to God, to remind you that our deepest hunger is for God, which reminds me of um, in the Christian tradition, if you are if you attend a church or part of a tradition that uses the lectionary this last week our lectionary reading for the gospel was the Samaritan woman and in that gospel um, Jesus meets this woman at the well and he asks her for water and they get into this conversation and he says that I am living water I am the water that if you drink of me you'll never thirst again um, and, and she was perplexed by that, but then they kept talking and then she, you know, believed that he was the Messiah and told everyone and told everyone about this living water. Um, and I wonder if that is what we mean when we say that fasting draws us to God. It reminds us that our deepest hunger is for God. Um, so, but the other thing she talks about that she learned from um, her rabbi is he said when you're fasting and you feel hungry remember that you're hungry for God and she said that um, fasting like the liturgy accomplishes accomplishes a repositioning so like when we talked about praying liturgically it reorients you when I'm um, sated so when I'm full it's easy to feel independent when I'm hungry it's possible to remember where my dependence lies. So I wanted to stop there for a minute because um, the question that I really had coming out of this and what I really, my mind got going with was thinking about longing 
in thinking about um, lament. So I got to be part of this, uh, watching this fantastic webinar out of Virginia Theological Seminary um, for a couple of days recently where we were talking about how do you do Holy Week um, when we're all, you know, staying at home when we can't go worship publicly. And one of the things that came up was um, what if we really leaned in to longing and lament as a spiritual practice? And so I think Feel like I find myself connecting that to this longing for food when you're fa or longing for food when you're fasting could really be a longing for God. And so when we're longing for our houses of worship or longing with those connections with people we worship with or longing with those for the connections to our friends, um, does that point to a deeper longing? Are we allowing ourselves to go deeper into what that longing really is? Is it, um, a longing for connection for human contact is it longing for intimacy is it longing for god um, and for a real experience with god and and if we allowed ourselves to long how could that then change us so that was a question i had all right so i want to move on to the next part of this and that is this I think that one of the reasons reading about fasting is hard, especially in a group that is predominantly women, is the reality that a lot of um, people and a lot of women have experience with eating disorders or have um, abused food or been abused um, with food somehow. So I don't know if that makes sense, but food has somehow um, become a source of angst and abuse and pain um, and body image and all that stuff. So not in the regular guide, but in the study guide that Lauren wrote 10 or 15 years after this, she addresses that. So she tells this story um, from the perspective of one of her teaching colleagues, um, Amy Laura Hall. And Amy Laura Hall is a teacher that I had um, too. And so I've, I've heard this from Amy before. Um, every year during Lent, um, Amy Laura Hall remembers this time that a student, when they were talking about fasting, raised her hand and was like, listen, um, you know, like what about people who've been abused? What about women who are in abusive situations? Like, should they really fast? And Amy Laura Hall says her advice to, to women who have been um, abused or who have been um, really, really, really subject to um, male dominance or really felt bogged down and abused by the patriarchy, she says they should eat chocolate-covered strawberries as their Lenten practice. And so I wonder what, what you think of that. I wonder what you think about how does fasting come into play for people who, um, you know, like can't um, because it takes them to this deep, dark place or it opens up within them um, some disordered eating or, or something like that. Um, and so how do you engage your, your body and your spirit to be transformed by some kind of practice? when um, fasting opens up for you all of these kind of awful things. So in the study guide, she talks about a scholar, let's see, Michelle Lewicka, who um, really tries to unpack this and thinks that it's possible that you that people who've been abused or people who have had disordered eating can, can actually engage in um, fasting. And... But Amy Laura Hall says, no, they absolutely cannot. And so I'm curious, like, what do you think? Um, is that possible? And um, and then how does this idea of, or how does this um, idea that Amy Laura has of eating chocolate-covered strawberries, how does it complicate um, the church teaching about fasting? Because it's it's part of our spiritual practice to fast. Um, so those are just some questions I have for you, and I'd love to hear what you think. Do you fast? Um, and what does it mean to you if you have? And, you know, what do you, what do you think, how, how does, like, body image and abuse play into all of this? And what was your favorite part of the chapter?
what was your favorite quote or favorite story or favorite teaching? And that's what I have for you today. Um, thanks for letting me be here and all of my, I've been home with my children all day, glory. And um, it's good to see all of you. And I just want to encourage you to remember that we're here for you. So if you have a question, if you need community, if you are um, seeking someone to pray with, if you're really discouraged, please lean on this group. And if you don't feel comfortable posting in front of the whole group, you should be able to see who the admins are on the page or go to our website. I believe it's www.thehiveapiary.com and you can see who some of the leaders are in The Hive. Please reach out to us or please reach out to someone you see posting a lot. Please lean on this community in this time. Um, that's it. Have a wonderful day, everybody.